The reality of life is death. The reality of living is non-living. There is no reality of living if we don't consider that we weren't before and we won't be after in this flesh. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I have completed the 12 weeks of the KT course and I really appreciate the effort and information that has gone into the course. The final commandment assignment was to reflect on our death. Correspondingly, it uh, has something that has arisen to me in the past few weeks. What does it actually mean to reflect our death? Is it a form of discipline to live a stronger life so that we don't mess up? You know, Jazz, the whole idea of considering our death is actually allowing ourselves to be steeped in the reality of life. The reality of life is death. The reality of living is non-living. There is no reality of living if we don't consider that we weren't before and we won't be after in this flesh. The majority of the time, our soul is not inhabiting this flesh. But like I said earlier, we become so hypnotized by the material world, by the matrix and by mommy culture that we think that if I don't have this body, if I don't have these goods, if I don't have this wealth, if I don't have this girl, if I don't have this stuff, then my life is not worth living. But it is all dust. Every single thing we experience here is ephemeral it is it is uh it's dying how could you say it's non-eternal there's an eternal the soul is eternal remember i spoke to you earlier about the soul the soul is in our it's your thoughts your feelings your words your deeds your character that goes on and earth living life living in the 3d is like a school for our soul we come here to experience the various ups and downs that are required for our soul's progression. But it's just like a school. So, so for example, if you have gone through K through 12, let's say you've gone through school, you know that there was life before first grade. And you know, even if you're in third grade, fourth grade, seventh grade, 10th grade, that there's life after 12th grade. And while you're in school, you don't forget the fact that I wasn't in this school beforehand and there's going to be an after school. And everything that I learned while I'm in school, every experience that I have while I'm in school, everything, every, all the knowledge that I accumulate and all the knowledge that I can apply and I learned during these 12 years, they're going to help me later on. They're gonna help me after. So the first thing I want you to consider is that we're mostly non-alive. <laughs> Right. We're most we're if you consider eternity, our life is less than that is actually too long. It's a freaking blip in the map. And so why I say that is because that is the reality. That is not something uh, that's not something it's not philosophical. It's not a nice idea. It's the truth of the matter. And there's a really good book called The 50th Law which was written by Robert Greene, and he co-authored it with 50 Cent. And the entire book is about, is essentially about being real, being real with yourself. And to be real with yourself means that, you, that you're not living under any pretense, any, any, any fake ideas like, I'm going to live forever. And that everything that's happening and everything that I have and everything that surrounds me is really what matters. What really matters is the state of our soul. But you got to consider that we live in a very strange time where death has been carted off to the junkyard along with a whole lot of other things like God, religion, mythology, all the things that gave us meaning in our life. When there's no consideration for death, then life doesn't have any meaning. We're, they tell us that we're just a bag of bones with, with hair and, 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 and water hairy bag of bones with teeth and you're just going to die, right? This is, this is what the mechanistic uh, uh, conception of the world has brought us to. Meaninglessness. Meaninglessness. And so to consider the afterlife is also to consider what is, the, what is meaning? What kind of meaning do I give to the experiences that I have in life? And this is very important, especially when we're suffering. 
Because suffering brings meaning. Why? Because suffering reminds you of death. This is why we avoid suffering. But going on that rant that I was about to give you with regard to how we carted off death, there was a time in our lives, there was a time on this planet when death was always at our front door. And I think death is coming back to our front door, by the way. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. When I say death was at our front door, death was at our back door, we literally were burying our dead in the backyard, right? Death wasn't this sterilized experience where they embalmed the body, put it in a box, and cut it off to the city dump, right, where they put you in the ground. Which that is even, even that, that ritual is going away. Because what do people do now? They burn you up and scatter your ashes. And I've heard, I, don't, I didn't look too deep into it, but now they're creating human sludge. They're carting off the bodies and they're turning it into the sludge that they're using for stuff. Human sludge. Don't quote me on this. This is something I was reading very briefly. I read some headlines on naturalnews.com. But essentially, there's no respect for the dead. Right In the past, you know that your grandfather, your great-grandfather was right there in the backyard. I bought this land, and one of the things I told my wife was, like, I want to be buried. I want to be buried in my land. I want to be buried where I live. Bury me here, baby. I don't know if that's actually going to happen. Anyway, my point is that there was such a reverence, there was such a constant reminder that most of the time when our relatives died, they died right in our house. We didn't take them to hospice. Right? We didn't take them off to the city square where they had the hospice, you know, where they have the hospice downtown. And then guess what happens when you, when you take your old people, you know, you have them in, in nursing homes and then they take you to the hospice. They're being cared for by professional, by professional undertakers. You know, my mom was a, was a hospice nurse. So she, di she dealt with people while they were dying. This was my mom's, this was her job when I was a kid. My mom dealt with dying people all day long. And it was a shame because sometimes she would say that these people just want to be with their families or their families would just want to be with them. But the way the system is set up is that no, because the death is not happening in the home, it's, a, it's an afterthought. It's nobody thinking about it. Death happens over there. It doesn't happen here. And because it doesn't happen here, it doesn't remind me that it's going to happen here too. We used to kill our own food. Right? I just... I'm, I'm, living in, I'm living in this ranch right now. We're going to get some chickens. And we got cows across the street. I'm surrounded by cow pastures. This is how, you know, and my children are brainwashed by the culture too. Don't think that my children are somehow special. My children are brainwashed by the culture and are constantly having to, having to counter the attack on, on their souls. But, and I got girls too. They're, they'll eat a hamburger, but they don't want to know about the fact that the cow, it came from that cow. They'll eat eggs and chicken, but if I get chickens, somebody's going to have to cut that chicken head off because it's been so carted off. It's been so carted off that it's outsourced, so there's no death. When we kill our own food, and I'm not saying this because I'm a man that kills my own food. My father killed his own food. I don't kill my own food. But when we do kill our own food, and just from my, even from my father's experience, once again, we face death. We face death. Death, you watch this animal was alive. My great, my grandfather, my father's father was a pig farmer. And my dad would tell me how when my dad was the best pig, he raised the best pigs in the village. Right? Uh, whatever. <laughs> I come from a long line of hog farmers. My dad, my grandfather was a great hog farmer and he had the best hogs. And not only that, but he had a special way of killing the hogs that they would feel no pain. And that was, uh, apparently that's key. If you want really good meat, you want to kill the animal in such a way that it basically just falls asleep. And my dad would tell me stories about how he would go out into the, go back to the pig pen, he would bring a, uh, a bucket and just a sharp knife. And then he would just, the pig would be there and we petting the pig, oh, good pig. And then my grandfather would just come around and just very slowly put the knife right in the pig's jugular. Pig don't even feel it. Not a squeal. He said, if the pig squeal, you screwed up. And so the whole idea was he would put, he would just very easily just cut that jugular. And my dad would have the bucket right there. All the blood would just, the pig don't even know what the fuck's going on. Next thing you know, the pig, pig is getting oozy. Pig falls over. You got a bucket of blood. My father said they used to, his, his mother would take that blood. He would take the, the pig intestines 
clean it out, fill it up with the blood, right? Tie it, and they would make like blood sausages or something. She, he called it chicharrones back in Belize. The reason why I'm telling you that is because my dad was intimately involved with death, very intimately involved with death. Why? And why was that even, what's even more important with that is that that death brought life. When you're intimate with death, you recognize that death brings life. That's a part of Jesus' message. Part of, the, part of the story of the resurrection, the death and rebirth, is that very cycle of life and honoring it. Honoring the reality that death brings life. There can't be life without death. This tree that I love here so much is going to die and, and, and as, tree, as leaves fall off and it turns into organic matter and it, and, it, and it nourishes the soil beneath it, more can grow up out of it. There's no, there's no birth if there's no death. And so these are all just various different uh, ways of, of looking at life through death so that we have a greater appreciation for everything that we do here. And we don't take ourselves too seriously. We won't take this material existence too seriously. We won't lament too hard, get depressed too much, and be anxious about shit. Because ultimately, the bottom line is you're going right back to the dust. What's the best thing that you can do? And I talk about it in that 12th uh, lesson, Jazz. Save your soul. The salvation of your soul is everything. That means retain a peace of mind. That means stay in a state of grace. Stop sinning. Stop, and you stop, especially stop th sinning in thought. Every time you're depressed, every time you're anxious, every time you're angry, you're sinning, sinning in thought. Purify your soul. Pure, a, a, a soul that's pure is a soul that has no guilt, has no shame, has no anger. It's like what we were talking about before. It's a soul that, it's a, it's a soul that allows itself to simply be. That is, our, that, is the, that is the most important thing for us. It's not what we get. It's not what we have. It's how we are. How at peace is your soul? Get right with the maker, the creator. Have reverence for the creator because out of justice for the fact that he gave you life. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk on things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.